Alright, hey guys. Today we're here to talk about the Pulsar ES2 mousepad. So I initially inquired about the Pulsar X2H, which we will talk about in another video. But unfortunately, Pulsar ran out of stock to send me a review unit when the time came. Now instead, we have gotten the ES2 here instead. Now the ES2 has been referred to many as identical to the PureTrack P51 Mustang. And if you guys watch this channel enough, or you guys speak to me in discords, you'll know that the P51 is one of my top pads of all time. Needless to say, the ES2 instantly became something I had to investigate further because everyone says it was the same. And so here we have the 4mm version. As I'm sure you guys all know now, I prefer thicker pads, which is why I requested for the 4mm. So to give you guys a quick summary, as per usual, the ES2 is a smooth medium speed pad with essentially nothing I can fault it on. It really is almost identical to a P51 Mustang, but we'll discuss those specifics in the comparison section. The build quality is excellent. The glide is perfectly smooth. It has good micro adjustments, speed, and stopping power. It's outstanding with arm sleeves, and it's just become another addition to my top pads of all time. There's really nothing I can fold it on. So the ES2 comes flat shipped inside a cardboard envelope. Now this is the industry standard now. Inside the envelope, the pad would also be stuck onto this plastic layer, and you would have to peel the pad off. The pad is actually available in two sizes and two thickness variants, but here we have the XL 4mm thick, which measures in at 490 by 420 by, you guessed it, 4 millimeters thick. Now this version costs 40 US dollars, or if you're in Australia, it's available at Osmod Shop for 70 Australian dollars. And also on the bottom right, there is a bit of printing, just uh, Pulsar branding and things like that. So the base is Alpha Cell. It's the same as that used on the P51 Mustang. And at this point, I have reached the conclusion that this is proper Alpha Cell, while the Alpha Cell used on the Kurosawa Ninja is actually different from other Alpha Cell pads. Now, if you've ever experienced Alpha Cell, you'll know that this base sticks to the pad like nothing else. And in terms of being a base itself, the Alpha Cell is also a top performer and humidity resistant. Now, interestingly enough, Pulsar themselves have actually stated that the 4mm version here is firmer than the 3mm version. Now, given I don't have the 3mm version, I cannot confirm this, but nonetheless, no faults regarding the base at all. Moving on to stitching, we'll cut it short. This is a thin, below the surface stitching with immaculate quality, pretty much as good as it gets, we're done here. Regarding texture, the ES2 is a smooth pad, yet not to the point of things like Anagon where you can sometimes feel like you're floating. If you don't like textured pads and prefer smoother feelings, this will satisfy you. Arm sleeve is also an important topic to discuss. Textured pads usually struggle with arm sleeves. However, that doesn't mean every untextured pad also works with arm sleeves. I'm happy to report here though that the ES2 works perfectly with arm sleeves. There is essentially no drag and you get unrestricted arm movement. Regarding speed and control, the ES2 is definitely a medium speed pad in the grand scheme of things. This is the perfect balance point where I think every game and every sense should be able to use this pad. You may prefer a certain faster or slower glide, but this is at a level where it's just impossible to hate. Now, I'd consider this a little bit faster than the Artisan Zero, but we're talking roughly around there. Now, finally, on to comparisons. This is where it gets interesting. So the first thing we'll talk about is comparing it to the Energon Pro here. The ES2 is a very slightly slower pad with better balance of speed and control. Now in terms of texture, there is a more stable and controlled feeling with the ES2 over the Anagon Pro. The Anagon Pro sometimes feels as if there is no mouse pad beneath you just because it's so smooth. Now both work perfectly with arm sleeves, but the Anagon Pro is just a little bit better. Neither have any restriction on your arm at all, and you should have fully unlocked arm motion, which is something that you would want. Speed and control, the Anagon is a tiny bit faster, while the P51 is a little bit slower and has better stopping power. Now, I think when the term consistency comes to mind, the ES2 is definitely a little bit more consistent. So now for the comparison that everyone has been waiting for, the PureTrack P51 Mustang. First, let me bring out the P51 Mustang packaging again. Now, as you can see, both pads come shipped flat inside this cardboard envelope. Both on top right have a clear plastic see-through piece that is the same size so that you can look inside and see the pad. On the back of the packaging here, both have a cardboard pull tab section that you would rip off to open the package. They're even aligned at the exact same proportions of the location on the box. Inside both of these, the pads come inside a clear plastic cover. Wow, who would have thought? Corporate needs you to find the differences between this picture and this picture. They're the same picture. You guys see where I'm getting at here now? It's pretty much guaranteed at this point. 
that these two pads came from the exact same factory. The packaging's the same, the packaging is the same again, and the packaging is the same. So now we can just skip all the boring stuff. These pads are essentially identical, and the differences are almost negligible. Now interestingly enough, I'm pretty sure that the ES2 here is actually Pulsar cloning the P51 Mustang, despite having released the original ES2 models in the Bruce Lee versions uh, a little bit before the P51 came out, the P51 should have actually been in development long before the ES2 was. As for where this information came from, I don't remember too well, and even if I did, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't be able to tell you guys. To me, the P51 feels just a fraction more textured under my skates, and I can feel that a little bit more. The ES2 is a little bit smoother. Now that is also reflected in terms of arm sleeves with the ES2 actually being marginally better with arm sleeve glide than the P51 is. Now speed wise, the P51 feels a fraction faster than the ES2 and aside from that, they are essentially the same hat. So this video is just another P51 Mustang review as well. You just got print, bro! <laughs> you can take everything I said in this video about the ES2 and apply it back onto the P51 Mustang. Now a final thing to note is that the Bruce Lee and Aim Trainer versions of the ES2 is apparently not the same as the black one we have now. Those are supposedly worse in quality and consistency. So do yourself a favor and if you are going to buy an ES2, make sure you buy the black one. Don't go for the Bruce Lee or the Aim Trainer versions. Now in between ES2 and P51 Mustang, at least for me, I still do prefer the P51 Mustang. That little bit of extra speed and a little bit of extra texture is a lot more enjoyable to me. Right, who should buy the ES2? If you like smoother pads on the medium speed with a perfect balance of speed and control, this is it. This is it. I think everyone should try one of these at some point and it gets my highest recommendation possible. So thanks to Pulsar for sending out the ES2 here. Pad is an absolute banger. I hope you guys can create a larger 500 times 500 version. That's the only thing I want in order to put this pad into my S tier. That's like the only change I want for this pad to become an S plus tier in my tier list. Now I look forward to reviewing future Pulsar releases and I'll see you guys all in the next video, which is most likely about the X2H here. Peace.